Snowpark is an API accessed outside of the Snowflake interface. It was implemented as an alternative to SQL, allowing us to query and process our data using high-level programming languages, currently supporting Java, Scala, and Python. The API provides methods and classes such as select, join, drop, and union, instead of constructing query strings and executing those, like we've seen with stored procedures in UDFs. Its main abstraction is something called a data frame. It's a data structure that organizes data into a two-dimensional table of rows and columns, conceptually similar to a spreadsheet. We'll have a look at this shortly. If you've used Apache Spark or the Pandas library, Snowpark data frames will be very familiar and quite intuitive to use. There's a couple of things to know regarding Snowpark's computation model. Snowpark operations are executed lazily, meaning an operation is only executed when an action is requested, rather than when it's declared. We'll see an example of this shortly. Snowpark also works on a pushdown model, meaning all operations are performed using Snowflake Compute. No data is transferred to where you're executing the Snowpark code or to another cluster for processing. This is often contrasted with the Snowflake connector for Spark, which actually moves data out of Snowflake into the Spark cluster to process the data. A large part of why Snowpark was created was to avoid developers having to move data out of Snowflake to use their preferred language. Okay, let's step through some sample code line by line using the Python Snowpark API. Let's say we have a simple requirement to build a data pipeline whose purpose is to flag transactions over a certain value and produce a table summarizing our results for reporting. In this code snippet, we're importing the Snowpark libraries. Next, we define a dictionary in which we store our connection parameters, including our account, user, password, role, warehouse, database, and schema. Here we're using our operating system's environment variables to populate the parameters, but we could just use plain text strings or do something like use the result of a call to a secrets manager. In this code snippet, we then pass the dictionary into our session builder method. This allows us to establish a connection with Snowflake and provides methods for creating data frames. For example, on line 15, we're using the session object to create a data frame from a table called transactions. Along with the table method here, the session object also has a method called SQL. This accepts a SQL query string, so we could issue a select command as another way to create a data frame. Okay, let's try and understand what data frames are with this next command. If I were to print out our transactions data frame by following it with a dot operator and then the collect function, we'd see a list of row objects output to the console. A data frame is a collection of row objects with their columns defined by a schema. Each row object contains the column name and its values. And because data frames are lazily evaluated, we would retrieve the results from Snowflake when something like a collect function is called, not when we initially created the data frame, like we did with the session object. Now that we have a data frame, we can start to do our data transformations. In line 18, we're using the data frame method filter. This is similar to a where clause in SQL. We're using it to filter our data frame on the amount column for transactions over a thousand. We then assign the output of that operation to a new data frame. Many of the operations from SQL have their own programming constructs. For example, here we have a group by and count. We can group by our account holders and count how many transactions they have over 1000. On line 20, we filter again to check if there are greater or equal to two transactions over 1000. We can chain together data frame operations by using a dot operator and then the next method. So here, after filtering, we then rename the count column to flag count. This takes the filtered data frame as input. We can then write that data frame to a new table, selecting a mode such as append or overwrite. This will create a new table in the database we set in our session config, and it will match the schema and data of our flag transactions data frame. Let's use the data frame method show to print out the contents of this data frame. It's similar to collect, but returns our result in a tabular format. And finally, on our last line here, we close our session, ending our connection to Snowflake. If you're looking to pass the SnowPro core certification, or just want to learn more about Snowflake, check out my introductory Udemy course. We cover the basics like the multi-cluster shared data architecture and more complex topics like accessing semi-structured data and estimation functions. And for a discount, click the link in the description. Thanks for watching.